For the first time ever, NASCAR Pinty Series teams have assembled to race at Flamborough Speedway. Get set for round three of the NASCAR Pinty Series Fan Cave Challenge. Last time out at Sunset Speedway, LP Dumoulin secured victory in a wild finish. But race two showed how dominant the number three of Jason Hathaway really is. The NASCAR vet patiently stood his ground and drove off for a round two win. Now the series visits Flamborough Speedway. This is a tough, gritty one-third of a mile oval that is well-versed in Ontario short track routes. This is the third round of the NASCAR Pinty Series Fan Cave Challenge from Flamborough Speedway in Millgrove, Ontario. This is the Pinty's 125. Hello and welcome to one of the toughest little blue collar short tracks in Southern Ontario. I'm Dave Bradley, along with me is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, this is the first time we've stopped here at this tight little short track, but this track has been around a long time. It has a long history here outside Hamilton. It opened originally in 1962, Dave, but for the last 50 years, the track has been owned and operated by the Caselli brothers, John and Frank Caselli. It is a storied facility. Race number two of the series had Jason Hathaway running off and hiding from the rest of the field. He really had a great run in that race, but it was the young guns who turned a lot of heads. Trayton Lapsovich had another great race at the 18 machine. He won't be in that car this week. Alex Tagliani is back behind the wheel. A big story at sunset was 23-year-old Connor James from Bradford, Ontario. He battled with the best of the best. Kennington, Lacroix, Tiege drove that car to a second place finish. He's looking for a big day today. And the eight car will roll off in eighth position here today. Alex Tagliani back behind the wheel of the 18. He'll start in 10th position. But like Flamborough Speedway, what's old is new again in the NASCAR Pinty Series, including a familiar face. And with more on that, let's say hello to Todd Lewis. He raced for eight years in the series and in 89 starts accumulated 11 victories. You always knew he was on the track. J.R. Fitzpatrick, the 32-year-old since leaving the series, has gotten married, had two beautiful daughters, and has continued to race just about everything he could in Ontario. I asked him earlier today what it felt like to get back into a NASCAR Pinty series car. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh pretty wild that we're here with the 22 racing team uh, you know if you just look at our history it's pretty ironic but uh, Scott's a really good guy really good owner and uh, I'm just happy to be in this party casino number 24 especially a track I know so well tell me about that you know this track so well you've raced a bunch of different series here how much is that experience going to help you uh, it'll help a lot just because this track's a little tricky it gets slick later on in the day and and we've won a lot of late mall races here but these are a totally different animal and and all these guys, they'll figure it out. So we just got to hope our home track experience helps us. Guys, in the six years since J.R. Fitzpatrick left the Pinty Series, he has evolved as a racer. He's more mature. He's more patient. And he's hoping that this run with Scott Steckley in 2020 leads to more next season. You know, Todd, he may be a little bit older than last time we saw him, but I can promise you this. A race with J.R. Fitzpatrick in it is much more exciting than a race without J.R. Jason Hathaway will roll off on the E3 Spark Plugs pole here today. And when we return, we'll fire the engines for the start of the Pinty's 125 here on TSN. The Pinty's 125 from Flamborough Speedway is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By PartyCasino.fun. And by Fast Eddie Speedwear. Get geared up. Well, it's time to go racing here, Dave. You can see NASCAR official walking through the field. Make sure all the cars have fired, and I believe they have. We're going to have some great looks this afternoon. Donald Teague in the number 80 machine. We're going to go on board the Quick Quick Rona Viagra number 18 of Alex Tagliani. And you can see the field is lined up behind the Dodge Ram 2500 pace truck, the Motor Trend Truck of the Year for 2020, pacing all the races here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. 
Jason Hathaway starting from the pole. This could spell trouble for the rest of the field as fast as that car was at sunset, Dave. Yeah, and he's been pretty quick in practice here today as well. Let's take a look at your quick wick starting lineup and who's lining up where behind that Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway. J.R. Fitzpatrick, his first race back, will line up outside the front row. And we look back to row number two. That's where we find DJ Kennington in the Castrol 17. L.P. Dumoulin, winner at race number one, will start for him. Back to row three, Kenny Fourth. Great to see him make a return to the series. Alongside him, Brett Taylor in the 33 machine. Kevin Lacroix in the 74, and Connor James off an impressive second place run. Looking back to row number five, that's where we find Donald Teach and Alex Tagliani. Both those drivers will have a little work to do here this afternoon. And row number six is Anthony Simone and Dexter Stacy in the 92. Final row this afternoon will be made up of just one car, Larry Jackson, beyond the wheel of the 98. Interesting to me, at the tail end of this field, you've got Larry Jackson and Anthony Simone, probably two drivers with more laps here than any of our competitors. Taking a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis, it's our first visit to the third mile Flamborough Speedway, 125 laps, and Dave, perfect racing conditions, 23 degrees. There's a good look at Dexter Stacy. They did have a tough outing at sunset for races number one and two, but the team tested here. They believe they have their program back on track. Also, Kenny Forth making his first start in 2020. Kenny Forth again has many starts with the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Cascar Super Series, but a lot of late model starts at Flamborough as well. Great to see him out. Teaming up with his old friend DJ Kennington behind the wheel of that number 28. As you can see, the drivers are starting to get antsy as the field bunches up. We're ready to go here at Flamborough Speedway, a tight, tricky third of a mile oval. And it's 125 laps in store for the NASCAR Pinty Series, the first time here, and we are underway. Stuffed up in that second groove, he slid backwards a couple spots. I'll tell you what there is to know about the outside groove at Flamborough. It really relies on the car and driver on the inside, giving respect to that driver on the outside. And Connor James is right now. He's keeping that SSG number eight pinched down to the inside. Not everybody is so friendly. Donald Teach is getting a fighting chance right now on the high side. And there you can see he makes it work as he slots in front of the Ford Fusion of Connor James as we ride on board with Alex Taglian. Brett Taylor in the TCB trailers number 33 trying to hold off Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix looked great in practice. He looked like he, he took to this Flamborough Speedway Oval in a big hurry. Not a surprise. Don Thompson Jr. cut his teeth here. Battle for fourth spot as the top three have opened up a little bit of a gap. Hathaway leads Fit Fitzpatrick and Kennington. Those are the top three cars on your score sheet right now. This battle for fourth, though, has Lacroix looking to the inside. Can't quite make it stick. Looks like Taylor is pretty good at carrying speed into the corner. Yeah, he seems to be. That car is rotating well, making lots of speed off. 125 laps. Once the brakes and the tires start to go away, you're really going to rely on setup. And look at this, riding on board with LP. Next time we go to an onboard, look for the seam in the racetrack between the flat apron and the banking in the corner. That's where these guys want their left side tires. J.R. Fitzpatrick right now running a perfect Flamborough Speedway line. Now you can see the three car, Jason Hathaway, actually getting the right side tires on that curving or the flat part for a little bit through the middle part of the corner, but that car is still working very, very well. 
I worry over the course of a longer race, it's just going to put more strain on that right front, having to carry more load because you're not using all the banking. Here you see that seam I'm talking about. J.R. Fitzpatrick nails it every lap. Go down into the corner. It's just a little bit darker pavement, a little bit of a tar line there. Outside, outside, side by side now, side by side. That's quarter, a picture quarter, perfect quarter, pass. Here, 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 here by one now. Kevin Lacroix gets the clear as he finally completes that move under the 33 TCB trailer Chevy on Brett Taylor. Back in the day, I enjoyed watching so many drivers. Guys like Alex Nagy, he was among the best here. Once someone opens that door, you do everything you can to fill the hole. Like, you, you take advantage of someone else's hard work every time. LP Dumoulin, without as much experience here, laid back a little bit and wasn't able to capitalize. Well, and that's the thing is, if you do have experience here, drivers like DJ Kennington, for example, who has won a late model race already in 2020 here at Flamborough. J.R. Fitzpatrick has so many laps here. But that home track knowledge, as we talked about off the top of the show, pays dividends because we didn't have a lot of practice time in these cars. Absolutely right, as DJ Kennington got real loose there. We'll be back with more NASCAR racing on TSN. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. Round number three of six of the Summer Fan Cave Challenge. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. You can see a great overhead shot of this tight track. They've done a beautiful job preparing this place. The walls look great, painted red and white. And look at the rubber marks on the walls, Dave. Why that's unique here, the walls are not straight up and down, so you'll notice the rubber marks don't start at the ground. When you touch the wall with your tires, it launches the car up, so the rubber marks are halfway up the wall because cars are going to get airborne. And, and that's something to learn when you come here and you turn a lot of laps. You have to figure out the idiosyncrasies of this track, where the bumps are, and you can see these cars hopping around. It's a little bit of a rough track. It has character. It's been here a long time, and it's a fun track to drive on for these racers. Larry Jackson being put a lap down, gets down out of the way of the lead lap cars, and we've got a bit of a chain of race cars going here. Brett Taylor in that 33, he's not running bad laps, and that's why nobody can make a move on him. I think LP is a little bit quicker. Donald Deeds is a little bit quicker. That's not good enough. Oh, trouble. Car Anthony Simone in the number one is off the pace and comes to a stop in turn two. Yeah, he slowed down the front straightaway for quite a distance, and that car has no fire under the hood of the Silver Line Tools number one. So Anthony Simone will roll to a stop. The pits are just off of the outside of turn number two. There you see the exit of the racetrack. And unfortunately for Simone, couldn't get through the traffic in order to get up to the pits. So that's why we're under caution. And Anthony was the fastest car in practice. So what a shame. There he is up to speed right behind Tagliani. Gets up out of the racing groove off the pace. Now he's going to come across the racetrack. And you can see him waving out the window as well, trying to indicate to drivers behind that he is slowing and heading to the inside of the racetrack. So that's a veteran move, and now Simone's going to hop out. He knows his day is done. The smoke is coming from the passenger side window of that Dodge Challenger. Yeah, a little bit of smoke out of there, so obviously something inside the race car has melted, caught fire. There's not a lot to burn. Sometimes the wiring will catch fire in there, Dave, and that's not a good day. Well, like you say, what started as a good day has ended as a pretty bad one for Anthony Simone. So far, having the best day is that driver, Jason Hathaway, 43 years old, and he has led every lap so far here at Flambro Speedway. Be back with more on TSN. It's been called Hamilton's Asphalt Arena. It's been in operation since 1962. Welcome back to Flamborough Speedway in the Pinty's 125 for the NASCAR Pinty Series. And there you see the number one Dodge of Anthony Simone on the hook. Joey McComb having a look inside the car and pointing down towards the MSD box, I believe, which is where all the wiring would be. How about this? Active drivers on a third mile racetrack, Dave. DJ Kennington leads the way. Not surprising, seven wins, but Hathaway has been so solid. Five wins of his own. LP Dumoulin, a little bit of a surprise there. He came into the series as a road race specialist. He's got four wins on short tracks. 
Let's watch again J.R. Fitzpatrick with his experience. He rolled around the outside of Hathaway. You have to keep your nose in play if you even want a chance of contending. Great start for Fitzpatrick on the outside. Clear below, three, one back 17 to the bottom. Still one back 17. He's still there, gets a little bump from behind from the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Now Fitzpatrick will slot into second. DJ Kennington holding that inside line to maintain third in the Castro Edge Dodge as the top four, five now all go single file. In the pits, Todd's with a disappointed racer. Yeah, guys, the one car has been retrieved from the track and brought back to the pit area. Anthony Simone, the driver in the number one car, is here and kind of shaking his head a little bit. What happened out there, Anthony? I'm uh, not too sure. Just coming into turn uh, three and four there, and the wiring harness inside the car started smoking. I think it's an electrical problem. Burnt up the fuse or the uh, harness or something like that. Yeah, and that's a tough break. You can hear the disappointment in Anthony's voice, obviously. Great job in practice and was hoping to continue that momentum in the race, and that won't happen. A couple of Quebec drivers doing battle. We were on board with Alex Tagliani chasing Donald Teach. At the front, it's Ontario top three. I'd have to wonder, when was the last time Ontario swept the podium? It has been a while, but one more point about Anthony Simone currently in the pits. We do have to mention his young son, Rocco. He's getting his feet wet in the racing world. He's doing very well behind the wheel of a go-kart under the tutelage of Anthony. Oh, yeah, they're a great team. He's getting lots of seat time and lots of social media time as well. It's fun to see the posts. Quick ride on board with J.R. Fitzpatrick and the Party Casino Dot Fun number 24. The top four all covered by a blanket, and they're starting to pull away a little bit from the 33 of Brett Taylor. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a speed gap there. Taylor doing a nice job hanging on to fifth, but Jason Hathaway, man, oh, man, he's got a busy rearview mirror. Another one does, too, and that's D.J. Kennington filled with that bumper to bumper number 74 off Kevin Lacroix. And look at Donald Teach. We talked about how good he was in practice earlier on this afternoon, and now he's starting to show it in the race in the 80. Again, you can really hear the throttle work of Donald Teach. I'm not, oh, he just flipped on a fan. See him reach up there on the dash, or likely one of the, the brake duck fans, I'm guessing. Why? Well, I mean, this place is hard on brakes, and when you're driving as hard as they are, a little bit of a, a green flag run here through the middle portion of this Pinty's 125. The brakes will start to heat up very quickly, and as the brakes heat up, the wheels heat up, and you could end up with a tire failure. And from where we're sitting, we can actually see the 24, J.R. Fitzpatrick, the right front rotor is starting to glow just a little bit on that race car. He really wants to lead a lap. You can see him poking a nose on Jason Hathaway, especially on corner exit, trying to get that run off the inside of the turn, but Hathaway just too strong so far. Fitzpatrick will go to any length to win a race. He's very aggressive, a lot of fun to watch, but right now, I think he's just trying to keep Jason as busy as he possibly can, wondering where he's gonna go. So J.R. Fitzpatrick, he might be riding back there, but he's definitely trying some different things on the racetrack to see what works. But he really can't take too many chances because the Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington is right there on him. As we run on board, have a look at the concentration from J.R. Fitzpatrick. I'd like to see more drivers and their hands on the wheel. Did you notice JR had to let go of the wheel with his left hand? Because he's so tall and your arms are, there's nowhere for your arm to go once you get down beside the seat. So it's interesting to me to watch the little adjustments different drivers have to make. Good battle waging just behind that group. It's battle for fifth between Brett Taylor and the TCB Trailers number 33 and the Teach Automotive Group number 80 of Donald Teach. Now, that team, for their initial start at Sunset, brand new team, jumping into the series, they had horrible luck. Unfortunately, that car just didn't work as well after banging off the outside wall in race number one. Didn't work as well. They're hoping for big things here today. And this, to me, is the type of racetrack that Donald Teach should really excel on. A lot of experience on tight little bull rings. Well, you have to think Autodrome Chaudière, 
Autodrome Monimi. They're both quarter miles, th uh, three-eighths of a mile in Quebec. He runs late models there. So he's he's good on these shorter tracks, and he had a good test here as well. Was very happy with the, uh, the way the car was working. Our 360-degree cam on board the Castrol Edge, number 17 of DJ Kennington. On the outside. Who's spotting for Larry Jackson here this weekend? But uh, they're a little bit busy. Yeah, Larry doing a great job at getting down to the inside and letting that lead battle go through. You heard the spotter mention four cars going by, so at least Larry knows that he can pop back up in line as soon as the fourth passes. And that's really important because when he gets out of the way, he has to slow down so much that if he stayed down there all the time, he'd be getting lapped frequently. So you've got to get back up in the racing group when the leaders go by, start to compete again. And Adam, we actually do have the answer to the question you posed earlier, the last time three Ontario drivers filled a podium in the NASCAR Pinty Series, thanks to Bryce, our stats guy. 2016, Caden Lapsovich, DJ Kennington, and Mark Dilley. What racetrack? St. Estash. Attaboy. I remember that race. Lapsovich took tires late. We got a battle for position. Kevin Lacroix to the inside of DJ Kennington. Kennington giving him a lot of room, but he really gets a nice run off the corner. Watch him drive in on the outside. No, he's going to let the 74 go. Tuck back in line. But you see, just by taking the normal racing line, the 74 was able to jump out to about a two-car length lead ahead of the 17 down the straightaway. Kevin Lacroix really getting on the throttle out of the corner. This is the reason I wish J.R. Fitzpatrick was still a regular in this series, Dave. The battles between Fitzpatrick and Lacroix would be absolutely epic they would, especially on a tight track like this place. And this is a place that Kevin Lacroix's crew chief, Don Thompson Jr., has a ton of laps on. So don't count the driver, the bumper to bumper, Total Lubricants number 74 out. Thompson's shop only a few kilometers away from this racetrack, and as he is so familiar with the landscape around here. 55 laps in the books of his scheduled 125 here in the mid Pinty's 125. And 24 party casino dot fun entry of Fitzpatrick is starting to fall back a little bit. The three of Hathaway is able to open up a bit of a gap now. It really looks to me as though Lacroix can get on the throttle earlier and harder than Fitzpatrick as we look back a little bit deeper at Donald Teague under attack from Alex Tagliani and LP Dublin in the WeatherTech 47. See the back end get a little happy under acceleration for the driver of the 47, but big shout out to Alex Tagliani. You remember he missed race at one and two at Sunset Speedway, a racetrack where he had two wins already in his Pinty's career, but just getting the feeling back in the 18 car in race competition. Teams missed the groove a little bit as Lacroix to the inside of J.R. Fitzpatrick. So there, quarter, bumper, clear, clear. I think J.R. Fitzpatrick could feel that he was there because the 74 was leaning on that corner pretty hard. And that would be a familiar voice you're hearing. That's Stephen Simmons, who spots for J.R. Fitzpatrick locally. He has spotted for D.J. Kennington, for Andrew Ranger, been around our series for a while. This year he's focused on J.R. Fitzpatrick. They go around the outside of the Bullies truck stop, number 92 off Dexter Stacy putting him one lap down. And there you can see the lead built up by the Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway. But this is the best battle on the track right now, and it's a dice for second. We can say this about Dexter. Oh, J.R. Fitzpatrick. Is there inside, inside, inside four. Four. Yeah, help or not. Walk back to DJ. All clear, clear. See, and that's great communication. You heard it. there's a gap back to DJ, so Fitzpatrick just pulled up, let the 74 go, fell back in line because the handling is going away on that 24. Well, and he drove way down onto the flat. So you go into the corner, left side's on that seam. If you go under the seam, like, like JR just got under the seam a bit, the car kicked really loose on him. And now it's going to be DJ Kennington who's going to turn up the pressure on the driver of the 24 in the battle for third spot. 
Fitzpatrick shattering the line of J.R. Fitzpatrick. As oh, Connor James has rolled that number eight machine into the pits. They're looking under the hood. Todd is on the scene. Just a lot of shrugged shoulders right now by the crew on that A team underneath the hood to have a look at that power plant to see if they can diagnose a problem. First thing they check, of course, the spark plug wires, see if one is bad or has gotten away from the plug. They're trying to find the power for Connor James. The motor is missing. They're just trying to determine where. That's Don Brock taking a look under the hood. This car run out of the EHR stable. As you look to the left side of your screen, a battle for seventh position, and that will go to the weather tech number 47 of Dumoulin. Yelpy ran Tej up the track a little bit, and Tej. Have a listen to this motor. That is a unique sound, and I don't know what would be making that sound. Dave. Yeah, something sounds odd on the Teach number 80, as Kenny Fourth in the 28 is in that fight as well. But this now, third place is a three-car battle. Fitzpatrick, Kennington, and Taylor. Brett Taylor right on the rear deck of DJ Kennington. He looks to the inside, but can't quite get the throttle down to get position to drive in on the inside of D.J. Kennington. D.J. Kennington's performance at Sunset Speedway races one and two, not where he would have liked it to be, so they came out and tested a couple different cars out of that stable and picked one from last year, and that's the one he's running here today, and it's a much better choice. Yeah, for whatever reason, race cars are like that. There's no rhyme or reason, but it just wasn't working the way he wanted. Go back to Old Faithful, something they had a lot more laps on, and he does look a lot more competitive here today. Catching lap traffic in a tricky spot, that battle for third is Larry Jackson almost down into the grass to get out of the way of those, that three-car battle. We can't go through this entire program without talking about the road course that races through the infield of this racetrack. The Waterloo Regional Kart Club, a storied kart club, guys like Cole Pern, Scott Goodyear, Paul Tracy, they've all run races with that kart club, moved to Flamborough Speedway, and when we get an aerial view or a bit of a, a, a wider view, you can see the road course that goes through the infield of the racetrack that come out in turn one of the speedway, use turn one and two, all the way down the back stretch, then back into the infield. Gary Colling, hugely involved with the car club as well as being the announcer. He's got so many titles here at Flamborough <laughs> Speedway. Does a lot of work for the Casale brothers. Gary and, and Doug Leonard do a ton of work here. Good look at second place from the back bumper of your race leader. And now look the 33. Looking for fourth underneath DJ Kennington. Some nose damage to the front of that Chevrolet of Brett Taylor. So a little bit of nudging on the 17 to get him up and out of the groove. And now the 33 will make a move for fourth. Yeah, great run off the corner for Brett Taylor. He's going to clear Kennington. Kennington gets back down into the racing groove. So Kennington back to that fifth spot. I was going to say, Kevin Lacroix is closing the distance at the front of the field. He's now just over a second back of race leader Jason Hathaway. And DJ Kennington, he'll lose a spot, but he'll lose it well, get right back in line. But as soon as he gets back in line, he's got company. Alex Tagliani is next in line. I'll be Dumoulin right behind him. Now, once those drivers cleared the 80 of Donald Teach, they were able to really catch up to that battle that was set three-way battle and it suddenly became a five-way dice as we're watching now the battle for fifth spot up ahead of this battle if you look out the windshield Brett Taylor has caught J.R. Fitzpatrick Tagliani gives a little bit of bumper loving to DJ there trying to to make a hole for himself playing a little tag here at Flamborough Speedway Jason Hathaway started on pole has led every single lap so far, all 80 of them, as we take a look back through the field. Hathaway in the Kubota, number three, has been on rails all day. Kevin Lacroix, you know, he'll run a lap a tenth of a second quicker than Hathaway, and the next lap, Hathaway will make that tenth of a second back. So it might come down to a matter of who hits the lap traffic where and who's able to navigate that traffic better. Remember, those two have a history from Sunset Speedway, so if you can get close, don't be surprised if the bumper comes out. Third place on track right now is the 24 of J.R. Fitzpatrick, but not 
for long as he goes for a spin off the front bumper of the 33 of Brett Taylor. Caution will fly for the second time. Fitzpatrick looking over his right shoulder, making sure he's out of the way of traffic before he gets spun around in the right direction. He wants to make sure he stays on the lead lap so he gets that car rolling. Jason Hathaway with a little bit of gamesmanship to go around the chair. Fitzpatrick will be able to rejoin the tail end of the field. Yeah, he got refired, pointed in the right direction in time, and that's why Fitzpatrick in the Party Casino dot fun number 24 is able to maintain his spot on the lead lap. Have another look at what happened. You know, Taylor got a good run up out of the corner. The fact that he hit JR really on the rear bumper. There was a little hole there. It was little, but there was a hole. They, sort of. If you hit a driver on the back bumper, you've not got position. That's true. And there's really nothing J.R. Fitzpatrick can do. He quickly got that car out of gear, kept it running, which is a big thing. He'll rejoin the tail end of the field. Smart move from a veteran driver of all disciplines. But everybody is still chasing that man. The number three of Jason Hathaway has been perfect so far today. Can he continue? Welcome back to the Pinty's 125, the NASCAR Pinty's series race number three of six of the Summer Challenge Series in a track that celebrated its 59th anniversary here in 2020 as we get set to go back to green, Hathaway and Lacroix. This is going to be interesting after the fireworks we saw at Sunset Speedway. There's no doubt about it. Just about 40 laps to go here at Flamborough Speedway. We're back under green. Lacroix drives it deep down into one. So does Donald Teach. He did. He made contact with the 47. They both stay straight and we stay green as Lacroix has to fall back into second. Your race leader, Jason Hathaway, once again. Tagliani and DJ Kennington side by side. That is for fourth position. Yeah, Tagliani takes that spot. He'll slide up in front of the Castrol Edge Dodge and set his sights on Brent Taylor. That's a good run for the Rona Viagra driver, Alex Tagliani. He missed Sunset because he was running for Kyle Busch Motorsport in the truck at the Daytona Road Course. So obviously can't be in two places at one time. He's back in his NASCAR Pinty Series car, and he's showing he belongs here for sure. This is a veteran drive by Alex Tagliani. He's taking what's there for him, but he's not overdriving the car and forcing things. So good job by Tagliani. And here's a driver who is prepared to force some things. Yeah, we saw smoke from the cockpit of the one car of Anthony Simone a little bit earlier on. That was electrical. This smoke is coming from the ears of J.R. Fitzpatrick. He wants to get back to the front in a hurry. And Fitzpatrick did come down pit road under that on yellow. So I'm not sure what they adjusted, the but they did do some work on that 24 machine to try to get it more to the driver's liking. Now, we talked about getting into a back bumper, a rear quarter panel of another driver. J.R. Fitzpatrick just did that masterfully. Moved up the 80 just a little bit to make some room, and thank you very much. I'll fill that hole. Junior Hanley made a legend out of himself by doing exactly that here. Clear, all clear. There you go, go get that 17. L.P. Dumoulin going to do the same thing. The opportunity was there, and the driver of the WeatherTech Dodge will fill it and chase the 24 as everybody falls back in line. The strange noise continues to come from the 80 of Donald Teach, and there's Kenny Fourth right behind him in that 28 machine. Fourth. He was telling me he doesn't think he's driven a race car competitively in many years. I think he was saying 10 years. <laughs> I can believe it. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen him in the NASCAR Pinty series, but he doesn't look any bit out of place in this series here today in a car prepared out of the DJK shop, the 28, running very competitively. Brett Taylor trying to close in on Kevin Lacroix to battle for the second spot. We're looking at the back bumper of Lacroix. Still half the way out in front. And 26 to a 35.8. And that's spotter Jeff Gutler for Jason Hathaway. He's telling him a lap time. So the differences between Hathaway and second place Kevin Lacroix. Steady stream of information all race long. 
how Jeff Cutler and, and Jason Hathaway have been working together for a long, long time. But he knows what his driver wants, and right now his driver has everything he wants. A clear windshield, nothing out in front. Kevin Lacroix being about four car lengths back, not close enough to really cause Jason Hathaway a lot of grief. Looks like the 33 of Taylor and the 18 of Alex Tagliani equally spaced behind the 74 of Kevin Lacroix in third and fourth spot. But I've been keeping an eye on the 13 as you see the H of James is back out on track. The yellow rookie stripe on the back of the SSG loves number eight. So they're just out testing now at this point. They're many, many laps down. And this is one of the more unique track entry points. They enter the track off the outside of turn four. So you've kind of got to come up the ramp and wait for an opportunity. Is LP Dumoulin just reaching down and making some adjustment? Now that could be a brake bias as the fuel load wears off a little bit. You want to add some brake to the back, take it away from the front. That's you spin that knob, and that's exactly what happens. James staying down out of the way of J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 24, LP Dumoulin in the 47. Back on board the 47. Now on the right-hand side of your screen, you're watching the battle on the left-hand side. It's for sixth. We're getting down towards the money laps. Just over 20 laps to go. As LP kind of missed the exit there at turn two last time and allowed Fitzpatrick to drive away by about a car line. This track really does penalize you if you miss a lap. If you miss a corner on a lap, you lose a lot of time. You lose a lot of that momentum. You really have to be perfect every step of the way. Yeah, a track like this is definitely a rhythm track. You've got to be in your rhythm, keep hitting those marks. And you can see the, the dark patches on the racetrack where the general tire rubber is really coming off these tires. Letting these drivers know where, where they should be running as Kenny Forth closing in on Tiege. Under 20 laps to go as the field stretches out around Flamborough Speedway. We'll take you to the end after this. He's been putting on a clinic every step of the way here today in the Pinty's 125 at Flamborough Speedway. Welcome back. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. But Jason Hathaway really has been the class of the field as he works through lap traffic. Driving to the inside of Dexter Stacy, he still is in a hurry because Kevin Lacroix is not far behind. No, it's under a second. The gap at the front of the field is Hathaway in lap traffic. Stacy, though, Hathaway's teammate, so that could play in his favor just a little bit, although we haven't seen anything play out like that yet. I don't think there's any team driving going on, but Hathaway did extend his gap quite a bit, getting around Dexter Stacy a little bit quicker than Lacroix. Well, just where you catch lap traffic makes a big difference as well on this track. If you catch mid-corner off, uh, it makes a difference where you can pass. Now Taylor to the inside of Dexter Stacy. Alex Tagliani will want to do it as cleanly as that. Let's ride on board. Technically, and he's close to Taylor, though. I mean, he's putting the pressure on. Taylor will know he's there very shortly. You see the Rona Viagra number 18 get a little loose. There might have been contact there with Stacy. I'm not sure if he thought he was clear and wasn't. But now he'll set his sights on Taylor and try to track him down. As LP Dumoulin still trying to close in on J.R. Fitzpatrick and battle for six. Yeah, it's still this battle we've been watching unfold for several laps now with 13 laps to go. Just in behind T.J. Kennington who rounds out the top five as we ride on board with the driver from Trois Gear, Quebec. The reason LP is going to have a hard time passing Fitzpatrick and it's like this on a lot of oval tracks where JR is making up speed is actually in the corner. So he pulls away a car length or two on every straightaway. LP can close in in the turns, but JR is still going to drive away from him again on the straightaway, and that's where LP needs his speed. But now you see DJ Kennington getting bottled up a little bit in lap traffic, and JR Fitzpatrick is going to stop looking at the back window and start looking at the front window going on attack mode on Kennington. 
you know J.R. Fitzpatrick would love to have a top five finish. Heck, he's here to win. Oh, yeah. But a top five would definitely be more satisfied than six. Ten laps to go that time by for Jason Hathaway, who continues to lead. Kevin Lacroix and Brett Taylor, that is your top three. As we take a look at J.R. Fitzpatrick in sixth spot, there's the gap between the top two, though. It is amazing to me how close Hathaway and Lacroix are in times. And they're swapping back and forth. One will be quicker, then the other will be quicker. So Lacroix has it under a second, but he's going to have to be more than a tenth of a second a lap faster if he hopes to catch Hathaway. Now, Hathaway's been in front all race long, so how much has he been able to conserve? Lacroix has had to work his way up from the mid-pack starting spot, so did he abuse the tires and brakes? Did he run it a little bit harder than the Hathaway number three needed to? I can say this with confidence, it doesn't matter what Hathaway can serve, because if Lacroix catches him, it's not going to be a tire battle. He's going to do what he has to do to pass him. As Larry Jackson off the pace, he'll get to the pitch without needing a yellow. Hathaway will be smiling to see that. No yellow as we ride on board with Larry Jackson. And the motor's still running. He was sitting in 10th, but we have five laps to go now for Hathaway. Down the back straightaway one more time. The gap has grown a little bit, I think, at the night. He was, McQuaw was closer than point nine four one. Let's see what it is this time at this point. Yep. He picked up three one hundredths of a second. Yeah, and Lacroix doesn't have to worry about Brett Taylor. He's too far back to make a move in these final four laps. He can go on full attack for the race lead. Jason Hathaway, though, still with almost a second gap between second place. And again, Lacroix will chip into the lead. Chipping in just a little bit, but if Hathaway hits his marks, he is home free. Kevin Lacroix is really driving the wheels off of that car, but the Kubota number three, it is set up well today. It really is, as the nose slams down to the ground of the 74 bumper to bumper total lubricants dodge of Kevin Lacroix in chase mode. Still is, though, Jason Hathaway, who did win in the opening rounds at Sunset Speedway, picked up his first win in 2020. He'll see the white flag. All good. All good. Big gap here. Spotter Jeff telling him there's a big gap. All he's got to do is roll it through three and four. Jason Hathaway going to win the first NASCAR Pinty Series race ever at Flagler Speedway. Win number two in 2020. 14 wins on his NASCAR Pinty Series career. The driver of the Kubota Chevy, perfect. Let's go down to Todd. Greg Masters, this car keeps rolling up towards the front and has another win. That's two in a row now for you guys. Yeah, I, this team's unbelievable. They work so hard in the shop. Uh, can't say enough for what they do for us. Uh, can't thank NASCAR enough to get this series going. We need this series in Canada. Uh, can't thank Sherry enough. Uh, the fans, wish we could have some fans, man. This is some good racing. And uh, yeah, let's go see if we can get another one. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Jason Hathaway getting the opportunity to do a victory lap here today. Possibly some donuts for the driver of the three. When we return, though, he'll celebrate in victory lane. We'll get a quick word with him watching the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. Born and raised in Avon, Ontario, now he has two wins in the 2020 season of the NASCAR Pinty Series. Jason Hathaway has made his way back to victory lane. He had a super fast race car, and he showed it here at Flamborough Speedway. Jason Hathaway makes it back-to-back -back victories in the NASCAR Pinty Series Fan Cave Challenge. First ever victory here at Flamborough Speedway for a NASCAR Pinty Series driver. Jason, that car was as hooked up this week as it was at sunset a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it was real good. We uh, we came and tested here and uh, we were real good. Just kind of didn't want to show our hand. A lot of the boys earlier, they were asking me if it was pretty good, but um, yeah, it's good. It's a fun little racetrack here. You can go wide, too wide for a couple laps on the restarts there and uh, it's good. Got to thank Kubota, Choco, Fast Eddie. NASCAR in general for putting everything on there, Total Lubricants and uh, Transit Warehouse up in Quebec City. So what a job. We got one more to go. Let's, uh, let's get the new tires on this thing and get after it. Two wins of the season now for Jason Hathaway in that three car.
it's always fun to hear a driver's first reaction to a racetrack, especially when they're standing in victory lane. Well, no doubt this will go down in the history of favorite tracks for Jason Hatho as we take a look at your Leland Industries Top 13. Brett Taylor with the podium finish. Alex Tagliani, welcome back to the series in fourth. And how about Kenny Fourth coming home ninth today after how many years away from this series? Great run for the driver, the 28. I'm still disappointed for Anthony Simone, who goes from fastest in practice to a last place finish. Here's a driver who's happy with today's result. He's with Todd. Kevin Lacroix with another solid result. Looked like some lap traffic caught you out and maybe prevented you a chance from really challenging at the end. Yeah, well, we were... Uh... Getting a bit closer to Jason at the end uh, before lap traffic, but you know, it's uh, it's part of the race and uh, still happy with the second place. Uh, car was really good and uh, as we expected and uh, maybe I'll get better luck at the taking my starting position next time. But uh, yeah, it's uh, starting six to, uh, to second. We're, we're happy with it. So important that luck of the draw for your starting spot as Kevin Lacroix says, we'll take a look at your WeatherTech point standings after three events and Jason Hathaway starting to stretch that a little bit. Eight points in front of Kevin Lacroix, so it's still a battle there, but Cannington, Dumoulin, Brett Taylor, it doesn't seem like a big gap, but we're only a six race series. Brett Taylor with another solid run in the 33 car. This team is on their game this season. You got it, Todd. We're, uh... We're here taking care of business with the TCB trailers, 33 Camaro. EHR did a heck of a job putting together the car for us today. You know, we drove to the to third place from six. I couldn't be more happy with our finish. Super happy for my teammate, Jason. Yeah, looking forward to next race. There's another driver is smiling under his mask, and here's the one with the biggest smile of the afternoon, Jason Hathaway in victory lane here at Flamborough Speedway. This race has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn, Dark Horse Trailers by Jim Bray, by Kubota for Earth, for Life, there's a Kubota for every job. And by Quickwick, the world's best fire starters. Go to quickwick.com for your NASCAR discount code. We knew it was going to be fun. The tight confines of Flamborough Speedway. One race down without carnage, Dave. What is the second half of this twin bill going to bring? It's a historic track just outside of Hamilton, Ontario. And the stars of the NASCAR Pinty Series didn't disappoint on a beautiful afternoon for racing. They showed patience, they showed composure in this event, Dave. Can they do it for the second half of the doubleheader? You'll find out on TSA. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.